terms of the different, uh, I guess, vertical product sets in our industry. Um, again, these are very well known in the industry uh, and, and I realize the expertise on the call. So they've all got their own very, very solid individual use cases, well understood in the industry, and, and they usually address their very specific customer requirements and are very good at it. And we absolutely don't claim to, to, to take part in, in some of the things that those um, systems resolve. Um, so just working through left to right, um, obviously BMS is a, a absolutely crucial and mission critical uh, environment uh, uh, platform in every single data center generally designed to uh, control and, and manage mission critical infrastructure and generally alert on hard faults or SLA breaches. Um, we find uh, that some of those are too late. Obviously it's very reactive, not very proactive, not so great at spotting trends in our experience and potentially costly, but at the heart of every DC is a good BMS system. Uh, and generally we work uh, very well with BMS systems. Just as I'm going through, and, and it's obviously not an exhaustive list, I've just tried to put uh, a sample of the types of customers, uh, types of suppliers that play in these verticals. A number of them, people like Schneider, obviously play it across a number of those uh, verticals. Um, as I'm going through them, as well as I uh, look at some of the names, uh, I'll also touch on where some of those also claim to have some uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning capabilities. Schneider, um, they, they have done some, again, quite well, publicized um, data center management as a service uh, and they partnered with IBM's Watson um, and that's mainly around less so on risk and more for uh, IT capacity management and a little bit of M&E capacity management but but they have definitely have got a uh, claims to have some uh, artificial intelligence capabilities. Moving along uh, the next one is electrical power management systems uh, and EMS systems used interchangeably um, so very similar to BMS systems, but obviously very focused on the electrical side of it, often combined and often the same type of offering. Then you get into, uh, I guess, some of the analytics type platforms. So CFD uh, definitely has analytics, of course, and, and fantastic for new build, new design, where you've got no, no base metrics to work from, but theoretical uh, and very little. There's some of it coming, but very little claims on real-time um, skills and capabilities for real-time optimization. If I just jump to the right, you get into the DSIM and the asset management, and again, extremely well-documented, uh, good and bad for DSIM type systems. Sometimes get a bad press, uh, and some of that, sometimes that's warranted, sometimes not so. Um, they are largely driven, so in our world, we're, we're focused on the M&E side of it, and particularly on the cooling thermal side, but DSIM systems typically have arisen and are based on uh, the IT side of the, uh, of the equation. Um, very little focus, to be fair, on the M&E side. Of course, that happens, and certainly people like Schneider have a, have a, uh, a very powerful M&E product set, uh, but generally they are IT focused. Um, normally, very, they are very capable and absolutely um, capable of doing very granular reporting, so uh, temperature thresholds, very granular at, at the uh, temperature at the uh, rack level, but often very, very costly. Um, and I think, it, again, it's fair to say that DSIM projects are very rarely driven from the M&E teams, and they are absolutely the, the, the reserve, usually, of very large corporates who have the budgets. Manpower is a, is a very good one. So usually need quite substantial manpower uh, teams to manage them and, and large implementation teams are very difficult to, to administer usually. There are some um, AI machine learning claims from the DSIM uh, world. So a couple that, that I know about, I've seen a little bit of experience of is NLight. So NLight have a, uh, a capability, again, mainly focused on the IT side of it, server workload optimization. IT capacity management, and there's a, uh, I think it's a Canadian company called Mayer, uh, are also very strong in that area. Then back to the one highlighted, again, uh, obviously this, this is the type of uh, arena that we fit in, but there are other types of uh, systems, vigilant to, to name but one, um, where machine learning, latest technologies, crunching in multiple data sets using the, the, the processing power of the cloud. Um, there are a, a, a number of well publicized, uh, initiatives mainly from Google a little bit from Huawei uh, and Google have actually uh, done quite a bit uh, that's in the public domain where they have used their own um, artificial intelligence machine learning algorithms to drive fairly substantial costs across their own internal DCs 
Um, I've seen various claims, but somewhere between 30 and 40% annual cooling energy from marrying up uh, server inlet temperatures, cooling unit performance, server utilization, and, and swapping workloads around. So some very, very impressive um, uh, claims there. And again, they've got their own deep mind uh, AI technology. Um, not a lot in the commercial world. Um, so Huawei and Google both use it for their own facilities. Whilst there is some in, in, in the uh, IT workload, there's very few vendors um, that actually claim to have anything to, to work uh, AI type capabilities in the M&E space. Um, just a little bit more on that. Uh, so I, I won't spend too much time in this. And, and of course, there are nuances, exceptions, uh, depending on what's your flavor or what you're trying to argue. Um, but it, it's just a basically a, a, obviously a tick box exercise to show where we think um, some of the, 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 those vertical product types, where they excel and, and where they really major on and their target audiences. Um, the, I've grayed out ones that are not really specific to risk. So a lot of those platforms do other things than, than just risk and they have a, a particular reason for being and, and their core product or their core offering is not driven by the risk side of it. Mm -hmm.